Hello everyone! It's been three weeks since the last video <laughs> and I feel so rusty but I'm improving because before in the last few months it was a video every two or three months. So we are getting there. We are nearing a weekly schedule of videos. Yay! <laughs> Anyway, so today's video is going to touch upon linguistics and I will be answering a very common question that I see popping up on Twitter quite often, which is how can linguistics help us with language learning? To answer this question, you have to consider different perspectives. Technically, knowledge of linguistics is not necessary to become fluent in another language. And millions, if not billions of people have achieved high levels of fluency with no prior knowledge of linguistics. But if we took that fact to say that linguistics is useless, then I think it would be extreme. For this video, I came up with a few reasons as to why linguistics can actually be helpful for language learning. So let's start with phonology. I've talked about phonology before on my channel and I will put some links in the description box below, but essentially phonology is the study of speech sounds. This is not something that's covered by textbooks or by language courses usually because there's so much to learn that teachers and textbooks kind of have to prioritize what they are teaching you. But phonology can really help with pronunciation. I'll use English as an example. For example, my knowledge of phonology made me notice that words such as about might be spelled with a at the beginning, um, which I would probably pronounce as a like about, um, because I'm French, <laughs> but actually it's pronounced with a schwa sound, which is more like a bout. So you don't say about, not a, but a bout. Of course, if you're a native speaker of English, you might know this, but if you're a non-native speaker, you might not notice that you're not pronouncing it properly. Another example with English, and this one is kind of a funny one, which I use quite often, is the difference between a bitch and beach. And it sounds funny, but a lot of non-native speakers will sort of pronounce them the same way and that causes a lot of ambiguity. I mean, embarrassment, really. And the reason why phonology helps so much with pronunciation is that in phonology, you don't focus so much about the spelling of words, although you do make connections, of course, between sound and uh, spelling, but you really focus just on sound. Because if you look at the spelling, you can be influenced by the way you pronounce your native language and make mistakes when you're pronouncing English or another language, of course. But when you get into phonology, you really pay attention to sounds and how things are actually pronounced by sort of ignoring the spelling or noticing how the spelling can actually mislead you into pronouncing something the wrong, the wrong way. Next one is sociolinguistics. So it's very hard to explain and summarize what sociolinguistics is without people probably criticizing me for oversimplifying things, but I'll try. So essentially sociolinguistics looks at how people speak based on their age, uh, their gender, their class, their culture, region, etc., etc. Apart from the fact that it's a genuinely very interesting field, it can be really useful for language learning because, for example, it helps you understand why people speak so differently from uh, textbooks or how uh, language is taught in a language classroom. You understand, for example, that men speak differently from women, different generations will speak differently from one another, and most importantly, you also learn that speaking differently from the standard never means that you're speaking it wrong. In the country or countries where your target language is spoken, there are going to be regions with different accents, slang, grammar, but that never means that they speak wrong or bad or whatever negative word you want to associate with a region or uh, the way someone speaks. There are just different ways to speak a language. Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the future currently editing this video and I realized that I was not happy with the way I explained this uh, third section so I decided to redo it as a voiceover. So this for this third section I wanted to talk about grammar and grammar essentially is the study or the use of the rules about how words change their form and combine with other words to make sentences. And one of the first things you will learn when you study grammar is that it varies greatly from one language to another. And sometimes the differences are minor if we compare, for example, Portuguese and Spanish, or major if we compare, let's say, English with uh, Japanese. But when you have a solid knowledge of grammar, it can help you a lot with approaching grammar in a foreign language in a more confident way. I'm speaking from experience, but understanding concepts such as transitivity, word order, conjugation, etc. is really helpful and can save you time. 
To give you a recent example, when I was taking Japanese classes online, my teacher did a lesson on transitive and intransitive verbs, and she was surprised that I understood it so quickly. And transitivity is not so easy to explain. I've been there as a teacher trying to explain it. It's not easy. But when you get it, um, it's kind of easier to approach it in another language. So it doesn't mean that I could produce it easily because, you know, I'm still learning the language, but the understanding the grammar part of the lesson went quicker. So if I were to sum it up, knowing and understanding grammar is pretty much a transferable skill that allows you to grasp the grammar of a new language more easily, while others might take more time to do so. And the last one, and I feel like that was expected, it's language acquisition. This one is a little bit obvious because the topic clearly deals with language learning and language acquisition. There are many aspects of language learning that you can study in language acquisition. For example, you can look at the role that memory plays in language learning, the role of input, output, methodology, and so on and so forth. That's actually a video that I'd like to make at some point, uh, but let me know if you are interested and maybe I'll make it sooner rather than later. And I didn't want to talk about language acquisition without talking about early bilingual language acquisition. It might sort of be surprising for some of you because a lot of you are adults, but I know also a lot of you are parents who want to raise their children uh, bilingually. Early bilingual acquisition is such a big part of language acquisition. I actually made two videos about it in the past, and again, I will link them uh, in the description box below. But there are many interesting aspects of bilingual language acquisition that are studied. For example, uh, the right approach to raise bilingual children, why do children mix up languages or code switch, and what kind of input works best and so many other things like it's almost endless <laughs> i know it's a little further away from regular let's say language acquisition but i still thought i would put it there in this video in case some of you are interested all right so i hope you found this video helpful and that it helped you convince you that um, linguistics is in fact relevant to language learning in some respect of course it's not essential and you can live without knowing anything about linguistics Although I definitely think that's a shame and I would wonder if it's a life worth living. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next week. Bye.